Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, she actually started work yesterday morning at ten o'clock. She called in, you know, to the doing part of her work at the same time. She's back at work this morning. She had some chills and uh, feel bad. It looks like if we just wait for it to say, okay, we're going to take a dentist report us out. So, <laughs> oh, itinerary? No, not really. The oh, you know, okay. What I gave you is kind of to bring a little more yeah, it, it's yeah. Not to be quite that normal, but I love the okay. subject So, but this is the. It's. Uh, in case we get into some variation of that, of course, you know, to scale this. Uh, well, I have I brought one, but if you need another one, no, I brought one because when I forwarded this to the administrator for the hospital, um, his email was kicking back to me because, uh, so in other words, when I sent it, it, it forwarded to everyone but him, and then I tried to re forward it huh. with that same email, and it kicked back again. Okay, I did have. Do you want this other copy? I, I can use this one. Okay. Or, I, okay. So we got to have I actually that. brought one just for him in case you know he, mm -hmm. he didn't get a chance to review that or chance to look at it. So. Yeah, so, well, while they're waiting for everybody to get here, this, this is just kind of the initial meeting, a little bit semi-formal, but just kind of going over the outline of like, well, here's what we want you to do, here's what we want you to look at, and then kind of amongst you all, I want to lay out my vision for what the schedule would be and how you, how you operate, but basically, you guys are going to run the show, so you might want to decide you know, early on who wants to kind of chair the meetings or kind okay. of do that. What I envision is this first one being here. Did you say you want to do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are. We're, we're kind of live. It's going to be yeah. a live feed to the public. But in the future ones, I think we can just do Zoom meetings where everybody just get on a Zoom call right. and not have to be present all together, okay. which might be more flexible yeah. for the next four weeks. And then I have an economic development director from all these different counties that's going to do a presentation online for 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 us. Okay, okay. Great. And that way you can ask questions, interact, yeah. and then when the meeting's over, you can call each other, talk to each other. But anytime we meet all together, we have to have the public okay. let okay. them know. So That's but they, yeah. they don't have to ask questions, all they can do is watch. I, I, and of course some people zoom, but I always like in person. Meetings. It's all it's up to you guys. Well and the reason is I just think like, impersonable Sometimes when people make points, you, it's hard to just see the body language. And yes, yeah. yes, exactly. I guess this is yeah. sales. Well, like I said, this is comes through. This is yeah. going to be your choice as task forces to okay. how you want to operate. So, okay. um, what's ever most convenient. I just figured every Thursday for the next five or six weeks, and you can do it in four or three or two or. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, Looking forward to it. And any time we want to meet here, yeah, we have a conference room too. Okay, so what's the matter? As long as, 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 as for some reason, this is taken, this is a good spot. We can meet there too. Hello, Roger, welcome. Come on in. Welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank um, right. Grab a seat, guys. I'm, I'm not going to sit. I'm just going to kind of, you know, stand oh. around. Give you, give you the outline here. Uh, I call Lee County, and uh, which wasn't on the list, but uh, but it wasn't as forthcoming as I. <laughs> In any case, you know, since you gave me some information that someone else did, let's maybe lead into some, some more there. It's, it, you know, this is here. just a suggestion. To the four counties that we looked at was just a suggestion. And I have talked to all these EDC people there in those counties. But when you brought the Lee County thing, kind of, that's great. It's just yeah. more information to help, you know, us make a better model yeah. for us. For exactly. Family. Something that fits. Person 
Now, is Sharon still? No, Sharon's not. Okay. No, she had to. She she would have been excellent, but she apparently it's that time of year, and she had a big staff turnover, and she had to do a lot of scrambling. So she yeah. was just like didn't want to stress. I don't understand that. There's only one typo in the book I delivered to everybody that was um, Debbie Zilkowski's in, uh, email address. It, was, it says dot ENT, it's supposed to be NET dot net. Just so that was like mine, all this proofreading and making mine really, mine's not ready to do it. It's yeah. not? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, we can fix all this. Is. Oh, yes, yep, I can see it. Two. The only mistake you made, whatever day you put this together, is two. Doing well. Two. Still. That is we really for, because I know you did this to get started with this, but do you have like another packet of information that we move forward into maybe another field of exploration? Or I'm just kind of kind of looking at down the down the path. What what uh, um, it's up to you guys. Oh, okay. It's up to you. Right. What, whatever okay. information that you want to get, we will get it. Okay. Well, I didn't want to wander into uh, an area that I should wander into. Or okay. No. <laughs> so, the, the task force specific. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to kind of wait before I get for David to get here yeah. and get more into it, but it's like one step at a time. Right. I mean this. The information that I'm hoping comes out of here produces a model that we present the task force and I as we present to the board of, uh -huh. of commissioners that says, here, here's what's recommended based on everything we know and everything we've looked at for 10 years and done nothing about. Uh -huh. Nine studies in 10 years and nothing has been implemented. Because I got a book here from 1989. I'm not that old, but <laughs> <laughs> just that kidding. Right after I'm just kidding. Our so, over PCC, I think it was around 2005 or six or so. And unfortunately, none of that was implemented. So basically, like I said, the, the <clears throat> all the people that I've contacted, you'll have access to all these people. You'll have access to anybody that you want to talk to, any person anywhere that you want to, you know. Um, in fact, Ted Budd, Ted Budd's uh, director, regional director, used to work uh, as an economic developer for a co private company in Charlotte. So if you want to talk to him about this kind of stuff, if you want to have any kind of meetings with anybody to bring information, you can do it as a group, you can do it individually, you can do it as a team. That's the beauty of the task force is you kind of, you're going to be independently motoring on with the task of how do we make our EDC structure from a financial standpoint more nimble, aggressive, and effective. Because right now, the EDC is solely dependent on county dollars. Yeah. And we haven't funded it. You know, we're kind of a cheap county. We don't yeah. want to raise taxes. And we don't want to spend too much money. We don't want to have no reserves in our kitty, if you will. But there's a, there's a $60 million mm -hmm. budget that we deal with annually, roughly, in the county. Mm -hmm. So every couple of years, Board of commissioners turn it over. You don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to fund it or not fund it? So they yeah. might, you know. So you just got all these things going on. So we have to find some mechanisms to raise private money to get people to to join membership wise or whatever other mechanism that that other people are using, so that we can have funds there. So the EDC isn't sitting still waiting to see what the board of commissioners may or may not do for them. They can still function. You know, and and that's that's the that's the impetus for this from from my standpoint. And I, I think the EDC is, to the most part, of one person show other than administrative outside of that person. Pretty right. fabulous. Right. Yeah. But I mean, unfortunately, uh, my point is that that one person does not only recruitment but the attention and. Just Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm saying that. I mean, to, yeah, that's what the next point was. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. So I want to see: Are we? See if we're live here.
Okay, we are live. Okay. All right. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for being part of this task force. I'm just going to step over here and say, I'm PJ Gentry, and I'm the liaison for the task force. And i um, extremely happy to have Pete Dutsky from Roxboro Savings, David Kulosaki. Did I say that right? Zilkowski. Zilkowski. Everyone calls me David Z. David Z. Yeah, I was going to say David Z from Minnesota or Wisconsin? Um, well, I went to school in both states. Gotcha. Wisconsin. So, so did Wisconsin. I. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Cecil Barker with Legacy Building, Tommy Winstead with Pointer Associates, and Randy King with Randy King and Associates. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, gentlemen, you all got this booklet. This is just kind of an overview of what the task force is. And we were talking earlier before you got here, David. The current um, economic development plan is solely funded by the county. There is no private money that helps support the economic development in the county. And when we look at all the counties and all over the state, people have better economic models for, for raising funds for, for our economic development. And if we don't have good economic development, we don't have money for anything else, whether it be infrastructure, schools, you know, amenities, all that kind of stuff. And so I was, before you got here, then I was telling them in 10 years, we had nine studies on how we should do economic development and we've implemented none of them to date. So it's really, and we look at the counties all around us that are getting, even Caswell County got, I don't know, have $15 million manufacturing, furniture manufacturing, I mean, just, it, and we're like, we're here, and yes, we've got some stumbling blocks. We don't, we're not accessible to I-85 and 40, like maybe Allen, that's county, yes, there's some other places, but we still have some good assets. We have this beautiful rural setting, and people want to live here, but they'd also like to work here. So we need to find ways to bring in businesses and jobs. So not just industries that'll pay property taxes, but we actually need jobs too, in addition to the, it, it expanding the tax base. And we do know that Duke Energy is going to be shifting away from the coal plants. The exact timeline and how they're going to do it is kind of in the air, but you're looking at a five to eight year window. That's about a 22% tax base for the county. You can imagine losing that and not having anything in its place. That will change the dynamics for the residents here tremendously. We don't want to see that. So, so your your job is the task force is to uh, somewhere here go through. We've uh, set up for you. Basically, we're looking at a six week research project, one weekly meeting in person, and so. This can be in this room or anybody else's conference room, or it can be via Zoom. And that is uh, up to the task force here. Um, you might, I mentioned that to, uh, Tommy and, and Cecil were here. You might want to appoint maybe a chairman during the meeting. And he said they, Tommy would do it, but you. you, <laughs> you know, okay, so just, you know, it doesn't have to be today, but in the next week, maybe decide if you feel it's necessary. If not, if you can all just, you know, here, here's the thing. This is a process that is driven by you based on the outline of what we want to achieve. What we've uh, identified is four surrounding counties' economic development structures with a focus on researching various private funding options used by, by each of them. They're all different. Um, one might fit really well, or you might be able to develop a hybrid model for Person County, because you know Person County, many of you have been here for years, you, you know, brought your families up here. Consult with other task force members regarding the pros and cons of these different economic um, development programs. For the next four weeks, I have set up an economic development director from each one of these counties to do an online presentation. So they would zoom into a meeting. So we would have that capability or we could always zoom in on it. But so for every Thursday at four o'clock going forward, for the first day, 20, 30 minutes, there'll be a presentation from that county on how they operate. And then you'll be able to ask questions, you know, poke for information. And that's kind of what's in the back the follow-up to that mission was we've got to Alamance Chamber, Wilson ADC, Randolph and Rockingham County, all the contact informations in the booklets uh, of those ADC directors and you can call them independently as well as as interviewing them on the web meetings 
but I've included here some of their some of their information. Some of the counties have a little bit more in-depth information than others. You know, some of the counties are a little bit different size. But uh, what's of particular interest to me was on several of the counties when they had their private membership list of the people, the organizations that supported the EDC, not only supported it as good citizens of the county, but also helped fund it. And so when you talk to a couple of these different uh, directors, uh, I remember one of them in particular said, yeah, when we started out, we started out like 2008, 2009, when the economy was really not very good. And uh, we decided to start raising money, a couple hundred thousand here, they were doing pretty good. And then they hired a, a fundraising consultant. And now they're bringing in between three and five million dollars a year. And, every, and then, so every three years, they do another fundraising thing for economic development. So that, you know, these are just people, and, and when you're looking at who's going to help us in our community, well, these are, these are corporate partners that are, many of them are statewide, regional-wise, you know, and they're, and they're doing it not just in this particular county, but a lot of other counties. So these are resources that you can look at. So there's just the different counties that are there, the different, like I like Randolph County has partnerships, stakeholders. And it lists the people who are, you know, basically what I would say, ponying up both resources and time and efforts. Um, and then additional resources is the uh, state. North Carolina has a uh, economic development plan, and they also have memberships. In fact, um, I'm a realtor for anybody that doesn't know, but the um, North Carolina Association of Realtors is, is one of the highest funding members of the North Carolina State Economic Development Partnership. So I get to sit in a lot of their meetings when they have them. I, I didn't know that until about six months ago and I was blown away. I thought, wow, that's really cool. So, and then just, you know, some additional information, Jacksonville's uh, Onslow EDC. And then there's just different angel funders listed back here. Just people who fund different things for different reasons. Just as a resource for you all to tap into. Um, and then on the very back, I've got everybody's bio and contact information. So um, that's kind of the gist of everything. And um, I did add at your at everybody's place there, um, Tommy was, uh, was uh, kind enough to share some information on Lee County's economic development. So that was the last minute printout that I gave to everybody at your table, at your seat. Um, and so with that, are there any questions from you on how how you want to proceed in the timeline we've, we've laid out because this is really dependent on you you are an independent task force not to be influenced by anybody but yourselves in, in the mission at hand i'd just say if we meet in person and we're doing zoom interviews is there a conference room that, you know, something more. I think you, if you said you had a conference room that had a bigger screen. Our, our boardroom. Perfect. Would that be acceptable to, to meet there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, that's great. It's just yeah. nice that we're going to be interacting. It, exactly. Have like a... Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, that's done. What else, what else do you at this point need from me, you know, as far as data, contacts, information um, that we haven't provided so far i'm sure things will come up so all you have to do is just email me and i can go to brenda the uh county the um, administration mm -hmm. assistance with county manager and she will pull data or information or wherever we need to get it for you to move forward uh, but we're just looking at how do we get away from just having county funding only and and, and some of these models you'll see that um I want to say Alamance actually has their chamber, their tourism, and their EDC all under one roof, which to me makes a lot of sense for a small county like ours with limited resources where we can pool things together and maybe be more efficient. But that's just an option. You know? Lee, Lee County had a version of yeah. that also. Yeah, uh, Wilson County has a little bit different one, but a lot of them do do mix, especially tourism and EDC together or airport and EDC together. I mean, they, they kind of, you look at um, economic drivers and, and, and industry manufacturing is a big key component of it. We've got two borders really to look at here in, North, in, in Percy County. We've got a Southern border going up against Durham. And from a real estate perspective, you know that it's coming this way and there's just not enough of it. People want to be 
be here. And just over our southern border, Danville and South Boston are just kicking it out of the park with their, their economic development, what they're bringing in, Microsoft's new facility in South Boston, the trade school that's up there, the casinos that's coming. So we're kind of sandwiched in here in this beautiful rural setting that people don't want to lose. So the other component of economic development we have too is we've got recreation, undeveloped recreation, which is, you know, that keeps that, that component of how do you develop without losing your charm. So it's something to just consider when you're looking at all these things. But more than anything, I think we need industrial replacement of the tax base and we need some jobs, you know, and, and jobs that are well paid that support, that support people. So just a couple, I'm totally excited. No, good. Okay, so first of all, I don't want to create is there so just hearing your little background because it stuns me that like South Boston's experience of growth and that they're not carrying the freeway or any, you know, like so it's it I'm not like a <clears throat> hundred year person county veteran or anything. So I'm really surprised by that dumb you know, dynamic. But my point in asking the question is, I mean, one are there barriers, historical barriers to economic development and or had has one of those previous nine analyses have has anyone done a SWOT analysis just to better ground, um, at least ground this group in terms of getting, at least for me, again, I've been here five years. I feel like I'm in a great community, probably not as much as some others in the room, but, um, you know, to get a little bit of a historical perspective around what, what at least for me, what hasn't worked and what, some, what are some of the barriers mm -hmm. um, historically to economic development. And, and again, you can send it out via email, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't have to go through it here, but I, any sort of legacy information would be great for me. And then the other thought that I had was just that we, um, and I don't mind kicking off a chain email, but, um, you know, just have some standard questions that we want to answer from each of these so we have some consistency, because mm -hmm. if we're going to do a compare and contrast, I want to make sure that we're kind of doing an apples to apples comparison with the various models. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it may be self-evident. I prefer a little bit more structure, especially because it's going to be a public process. I want to, and you were putting their names behind it. I want to make sure that it can uh, withstand scrutiny and right. withstand any um, external observations. The best way to do that, in my mind, is to have some consistency in questions in terms of making sure that we're hitting the, the key points with, with each, each mm. community. Well, I, here again, as a task force, I leave that for you developing that format. I'm trying not to in, over influence how you go about doing. I mean, this. I'll take the first crack at some questions. I, I, I have theory. thought about that also. You know, how we go about delegating out different areas that we go in, yeah. because obviously we don't want to duplicate. You yeah, know, one person. Uh, I say like calling different EDCs. I think if he calls uh, Alamance County, I could call Lee County. Ooh, Report split it up and report back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, setting the dynamic of uh, each sure. uh, calls. I'm, I'm no, that's in, in many parts. Of that. Yeah, well, and that's so mm -hmm. help me understand just process. You know, maybe the slowest one here, but are we, I, are we, so I thought that you're setting up calls for all of us to participate in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, or help me on it. Okay, the, the, the first thing was, do you want to meet in person or do you want to meet in Zoom? And it looks like everybody would prefer to meet in person. My, my preference. I mean, just okay, so, I like in person. Yeah. okay yeah. so we will meet in person, but the the person who will be presenting will be coming in via webinar. Perfect. Yeah. So, and then there will be the interaction part of it there. And I just, because it's a lot to ask them to travel here for a 20 minute presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a few totally agree. Yeah. Oh, we'd be happy to do yeah. that, but and then if you, between the five of you, could develop a list of questions that you think about. There's your emails, or except for the two typos, I'm sorry, we'll fix that. But if you, you know, um, have each other's emails, and then you just say, here, here's my questions, here's my questions, and then just kind of get them all together so they're not duplicated. Yep. Or yes, no. suggestions? Yeah. No, I think that's. I think part, either this afternoon or. And follow up emails, we can develop questions. If we have about 20 minutes of time, you know, I'm sure questions will breed additional questions. But if we have a set approach to right. get
gathering information from the presenter. That would be terrific. A 20 minute meeting, and then we can, among ourselves, uh, sort of take stock of what they've said, what we think might work here, the pros, the cons. And if we want to assign one of us to do any follow up questions or emails, um, it sounds like the presenters would be receptive to that. I think David makes a lot of good points. Uh, context is helpful, background is helpful, but I think it's critical that we stick to our narrow focus in terms of we are trying to identify a model that will allow for sustained funding mm -hmm. so that economic development can be successful rather than trying to determine what assets do we have, how do we compare, how do we compete with Danville or surrounding counties or surrounding states. We're looking at funding. We're mm -hmm. looking at a, a model that allows for consistent funding for economic development. Mm -hmm. And I think it's up to the commissioners and others in future forums to determine you know, where does the focus lie? Do we want to emphasize support for local existing businesses and their expansion? Do we want to focus on recruitment? You know, what assets do we want to promote? All of that, I think, is that a later discussion yeah. that's beyond yeah. the scope of what we're being asked to do. And I think that while individually we all have contributions probably to make to those conversations, for this purpose, mm -hmm. in order to achieve our mission, I think we need to be very focused on we're looking at models. We're trying to determine a model that we think could be successful in person County. Exactly. And beyond that, it's easy to lose the focus when you just you're given a task that's like the task force it's not another appointed board it's got a limited lifespan because you really just want to get down into the to the nitty-gritty there's different places that use different models for the for the financing of it how do they do that they do it this way this way and this way and how is it all how is it all structured together because that's another component how is that financing structured together under the umbrella of economic development. So we want to identify some best practices that we could benefit better from because then once it's identified and recommendations were made, your recommendations are going to go before the commission because it relies on the board of commissioners to make the decision. And that's you know, so we really want to be able to say, hey, this is going to be good for us in the overall long run. If we don't do something, and I'll be happy to see the um other presentations that we had, the PowerPoint were basically all here's the different models that we've used. <laughs> and I can I can send those all to you. You can see all those models that they've looked at over the last decade. And a lot of them are a lot of them are in use with these other uh, other communities. I mean, there's no nothing new here. There's no nobody's recreated the wheel. They just said, hey, we did it this way, we did it this way, we recommend this, we recommend that. So and can you, can you make a recommendation, implement it, and then adjust it and change it? Of course. That's kind of an ongoing process with business and, and life. You always have to make adjustments as you want forward. So, but if we just get a good structure in place that, that you know, if we need to tweak it, it can be tweaked, that would be the goal. So I agree with Keith mm -hmm. tackling on that first as we move forward, but um, I think we'd be lost in our uh, research of what we find and ideas if we don't somehow tag those along with that, maybe on the back side of work as it moves along. That could be another yeah. And <laughs> when, of course, you're coming from the county side of it, and a lot of this information, well, most of this is a 5013C private side. Mm -hmm. So does a directive come from the county commissioners? Is that something they say, okay, we want to see this happen? How does the commissioners implement that? into the private side. They they do. I mean it's 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 part of the they they approve the the formation and we do have one now the TCBIC but I just don't know it, it, it's kind of a stagnant organization. Like you know more about it because you were around in the 80s when that was you know kind of rocking and rolling a little bit more but um I think it may have been I, I may be wrong but that, that may have been more specific to development of the park rather than broader economic development. But I don't know, but I think for this purpose, I've been around we should first look right. at the model. Yeah. To answer David's question, a little research I've been working on. So in the southern part of, in Virginia, mm -hmm. did the biker money they received, 
they allocated that into the four counties mm -hmm. for development. So that money is sitting there when a potential client comes along, they have that as a um So is that like the golden week? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Huh. Uh, fortunate for those counties that mm -hmm. they were able to get that in place. I think the winery got to some of that money, right? Mm -hmm. Just the one that hurt me. Yes, I oh, think four, four, four million dollars, I believe. How much? Four million is what I heard, but I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's correct, but that's just something I remember somebody mentioning the dollar. But you asked about the swaps, and we I've been on the board of the swaps some years ago. So that that's probably in a book over in the county manager's office somewhere. And it's probably pretty accurate still today with some modifications on Everybody get internet, high speed internet at home. I think that was actually in there at that time because I was on the board. I, I owned the other company, so I had interest in making sure everybody got high speed internet. Uh, so that's probably in the manual somewhere. That would be good to read what the swaps are. Mm -hmm. And also, there was a study done, which I was on, that looked at combining all of the the uh, tourism board and Uptown Development and Chamber of Commerce, we actually did study that. We had members from each group that we met and stuff that and we went through the same process. So what, what's the strength of the weakness of opportunity and threat of doing this? Why, why can't we do this? Why should we not do this? So that's been done too. So maybe, and I looked at my libraries and could not find, I gave my copy to somebody. I can't remember. There's another county manager. Well, there's like I said, there's there's ten years of those so those similar things. The last economic development strategic analysis was done in 2018. Strengths, weaknesses, and whatnot. So, like I said, I can share all of these. Um, just the most recent, just for me, mm -hmm. I'd love to just mm -hmm. get some context. Yeah, yeah. we had um, there was a, a PowerPoint presentation scheduled February of 2021, which was I believe the state at the EDC board. Um, in 2020, there was, yeah, that was the NCEDC uh, 2020 Comprehensive Plan and Funding Needs. There was a PowerPoint consultant presentation in 2019 on recommendations, and there was one in 2018 on, on the SWAT. Um, 2016, Sharon Decker was here, and Pat McCrory was, was governor, and, and he, was, he was basically the one that started pushing for the public-private part, partnerships, you know, the North Carolina Economic Development. Um, so, and then back to, uh, I want to say in uh, 2014, the EDC was hosting half day charrettes for development economic goals and plans, which I participated back in 2014. Um, and then the previous uh, futures of the PC EIC was in 2011. So, you know, we're going back to, to you know, basically the early 2000s. Um, I think we had the the EDC board was originally formed in 82 with the PCBIC, and then around 2011, the board was just dismantled. And we had eight or nine different changes to the bylaws since then, just, just the EDC bylaws. So, and, then, and you understand that EDC is dependent on the board of commissioners. Yeah. They can make recommendations all day long. In looking at the material, I'm surprised that we don't have this in place. And also, too, in looking at the corporate partners that are in other areas, they're already here in our county. Yeah. We're yeah. not even yeah. taking advantage. We're not even asking. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's money that is lost. I mean, until we get this in play. But one of the things, you know, I've talked to different people, obviously, there's many challenges to our private government, how they interact. You know, how do we put that together? And the, one of the biggest questions I have, I mm -hmm. feel like we're going to move forward the recommendation for this, but it would be nice to go to different counties and research and see how county private, um, you know, are they sharing support staff? In um, some cases, they how, are. How do some, they handle the separate. different uh, potential attendant? 
and it comes from from which side, private or corporate or government side. Of it. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting when you get a chance to listen and then interact and ask questions of the different directors. And if there's more people that you want to bring forward to a meeting, let me know, and I'll you know get to hook them up and and, and whatnot too, so that they can be you know president at whatever meeting that you have. But they will tell you exactly how it functions. I think one of them. I thought it was really interesting to actually have a nonprofit construction arm to do construction for the EDC. It's the nonprofit, it's the nonprofit private development company for the EDC, which is a 501c3, which is like, wow, that's pretty interesting. So you'll get you get to, to ask and talk about these things with the different directors of the different panels. So could we even go to the next level as far as the private? The way it's structured, I know this, I mean, they have some counties in Oregon, mm -hmm. where they have four and five different paid positions. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're at that, but would we actually make recommendations for that also? We could. Because, you know, it could because it's, it's two, all two paid positions. It's a, yeah, it's a funding okay. mechanism because if you're going to, if you're going to need something more to accomplish this task that you want to set up, you've got to give that, you know, the foundation for it. So, like I said, this is. This is the recommendations that, that is you see as a board coming together, you know, um, and what it was the most, when you bring all the information together, what's the most critical stuff? If the task at hand is how do we get the funding mechanism, then how do we implement it? How, how is it supported? And, that, and it could be, you know, that we need additional personnel. I mean, I have to say right now, our current economic development director, we have asked her to do everything shovel the snow seriously she's i don't know how any one person could possibly do that that she supposedly does in a day you know i mean it's just it's so overwhelming to me i'm, looking, I'm just looking at five thousand feet looking down like how did she do all this stuff but so yeah that's the kind of stuff that, that it's necessary to address something you hit on earlier and i think it was a huge success for the race with the rcs was the financial consultant that I worked with Tom Long, Dr. Tom Long Jr. did also, mm -hmm. but having them with you going into uh, businesses, wealthy uh, homes to ask for money, um, it helped uh, tremendously. Yeah, I think Alan and Tony said it made all the difference from raising a couple hundred thousand dollars to getting the home. Uh, it looks like also they had. Um, as part of their campaign to solicit support, they were soliciting, soliciting it on a pledge basis where you were committing to multi-years. Mm -hmm. And so that eliminates some of the annual volatility, but also really uh, helps when you have a downturn year because those funds have already been budgeted as opposed to businesses shutting the door and saying, come back next year, this one's going to be mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I think that it's also the mindset is such that this is an investment rather than an expense. And you're investing in something that's going to provide you with a return. And then it will become self sustained. Uh, it's just like a recognized value, and it's going to take some, some success. Maybe we can have seen some success stories from some of these other surrounding counties that speak to the potential. What, what successful economic development can do for the citizens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think we should, if, if we're going to have a presenter next week, mm -hmm. the first one, mm -hmm. I think maybe we should start with the questions. And I think that'll help us when we get the feedback from the first presenter. I think all of a sudden we'll have a much better sense of direction and it'll stimulate some of our thinking. And then we can move on to the next one, make notes what we like, what we don't like, and uh, either one will perhaps stand out from the group as this would be most suitable for person counting in our opinion, or none would be perfect here, but we took this, we took that, we took this, uh, and we can create a model, it's a hybrid as you called it, and put that forward and we will have achieved our goal. So let me understand that uh, we're going to develop a list of questions for these presenters to address. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Between the between the five of you, you know, get your, you know, get, share with email. And just say, here's my list of questions. What's everybody got to add or subtract to this so that you're not duplicating efforts. But also know that this may be some impromptu stuff because you may get some of your answers to the questions as somebody's presenting it. Because I know a couple of the, the agency directors are pretty dynamic and they're very excited and, and forthcoming with the information. So I just think it'd be fun to, to get that and then just be able to interact with them and clarify stuff too. Um, and and as, I, as I can't emphasize enough, you need something, if you want some information or data, or if you need some anything from me to assist you in the task to make it easier because I know you guys are busy. We've got businesses to operate. I appreciate your time so very much for doing this. We want to, you know, keep it down to six weeks. If you need more time, fine. Or if you get to five weeks and say we're done, that's fine too. But the six weeks was just kind of a window that I thought would get enough time um, for the task. I think right now the EDC runs about 2% of that, but there may be a couple of items in there that, you know, or EDC. Uh, no, yeah, there's other, EDC is, kind of, well, it's all, it's in the general fund. I do have some money now that I think it's going to the strategic fund, but, and that's something very new, but, but there is no separate line item, which, would be helpful yeah. in my opinion if we had a separate line on it for EDC instead of just being the general fund. This is a, if it's economic development, if everything is contingent on good economic, solid economic development and functioning in our county, it should take that importance to the budget. Well, this thing is obviously critical to have good, accurate numbers to compare to. A model that is working so that you know that. So basically, the county only fund two positions for the EDC, that's it. Two full time? Yeah, right now. That's, and that's, that's their it. county employees. Their county employees, yeah. yeah right. Their county yeah, and that 2% it, it's got more than just EDC, it's got CIS and a bunch of other stuff in there that, you know, like I said, I, it would be better, I think, if EDC had included a lot. Well, I guess we'll get more into it when we um, sort of sort out exactly how this public private partnership works. But mm -hmm. the public, I'm sorry, the private industry that the businesses that are investing in these other counties in their partnerships. Um, I mean, these are smart, successful businesses, and there's a reason why they're doing it. If you can get a business to devote its resources and talents to helping with recruitment or expansion so we're in finance obviously if a new employer comes here and brings a workforce or brings you know high paid executives or brings a need to purchase rolling stock or more importantly finance rolling stock or something like that you know we stand to gain from that entry into our county. So why wouldn't we be part of the recruitment? And I think we lose something if you don't get businesses to stand to gain. And that's the reason why they're doing it. I just think that there's gotta be a way to leverage that because we have a lot of businesses here that would stand to gain from you know, that kind of activity. And we have a local hometown bank with a whole lot of money. <laughs> We do. We do have to look at the board. <laughs> one of the problems that I wrote um, help for impacted businesses, especially through yeah. COVID. Yeah. They, the local lenders, have a pool of money yeah. that is set aside that that pool of money can be pulled from, and then the business hopefully, you know, will be able to pay it back. Yeah, that was yeah. Yeah. It was elements. Yeah, I thought that was one of the really good. Yeah, and, we, and I know a lot of people are concerned about the private public partnerships, you know, it's kind of getting governments too much involved in business, but it's the way in the world right now. But the private entity part of an economic development program is that if we need to move forward and finance something or market it or advertise or do something to promote the EDC, there's a fund to do it. We're not held hostage because we haven't gotten business from. We're not, we're not stalled. 
And if you mobilize the private <clears throat> industry, they also have a self-interest and they understand long-term investment. I don't only do something today if I can immediately financially gain today. It's a, it's a planting the seed, it's a developing relationship. It takes time and you all have the same things in your business. So it doesn't meet with somebody at noon and at one o'clock, he's out at their site building a new facility. It doesn't work like that. We understand that, but there's an investment that's made up front in order to make a return on that investment down the road. And I think uh, businesses recognize that. And obviously in other counties, do just that. Any of you in the Rotary Club now? Mm -hmm. And what's their... Um... I used to be a president. I was a member for 15 years. The fund that the paper money goes into is built up to, is it 250,000? Yeah. yeah. Somewhere in that range. I think I got a report. And it's years like ago, when we started the paper fund, which was in 88, I think, um, we always took half of the net proceeds and, and stuck it in an account to draw interest and money. I put the other half and put it in local support, charities, uh, mm -hmm. the phones at the hospital. You yeah, know, we, we probably bought all those because you know, every year we give money to the hospital with the phone. Life line phones, I think we call it. But from back in the 90s, the thinking was, yeah, that fund is building. Yeah. Should we invest it somewhere, use it, put it to good? And, and, the, fund, and the thinking back then was, a civic center. Person County needs a civic center. Cannibal County has a civic center. Person County does. You know, that would be an investment. So, so the Rotary Club at that time was thinking, yeah, we come along and get interest in a civic center. We've got $250,000 we can just put in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may not be the thinking now, but that was the thinking then. I know I was there. So that was our thing. And we were trying to get a civic center. So, and, there, and the point being made is, I'm sure there are other clubs, the Kiwanis Club, uh, I'm sure it's private investors thinking the same thing. You know, if we just have a, uh, a home builders association, you know, what we do is we're going to get more homes built here. That's going to give us more business. We'll, we'll jump in 50000 a year or whatever. You know? So, I'm sure there's a lot of that out there. If we could just it's a matter of tapping into it, and get organized and say, you know, you're going to give a return on your investment. Build the team. Uh, you know, you got to build the team. Right. Get the buy-in from the team. Get them. Yeah. And it'd be that big. You bring out just the best point because you can get people invested. Right. Get them invested in this place. Look, and they just live here. I mean, I've lived a lot of beautiful places. This is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And, and people who live here all their lives know it. But they don't, I don't think they know it as good as I do because I've seen other places and I still like this one the best. <laughs> and I'm just saying, this is amazing. It's an amazing place. They have amazing assets. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you all can produce for the county. I think that's what Randy was saying too. Um, when you have successes, you can make sure that the people who are funding, yes. Wag that tail, because <laughs> there's always a good feeling when you donate to something and you see a success and you're able to have a good feeling about it. Well, gentlemen, it's on you. I remain at your service for anything that you need. And we will be meeting next Thursday at your office, at your board room, so we can have a good discussion. Will the presenter be expecting to Zoom with us at four? Yes. What you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to change the time, I just thought four to five is kind of yeah, pretty four decent. Five. One hour hours. Hours. is just trying to get to the meeting and then come back from the meeting is a challenge. So this mm -hmm. is four to twelve. Mm -hmm. I prefer mm -hmm. the source mm -hmm. at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Yeah. Work beyond the four to five. Okay, four to five. And so, I think if we have an hour set aside, then twenty minutes with the presenter gives us forty minutes to. Um, Assess and plan for our next session, mm -hmm. and we will be hopefully efficient with our time. So, was, was you about to adjourn? Is that what you were about?
Yeah. Well, I just kind of like, unless you've got something. She's handed it. She's handed it over. Basically, yeah. Okay. One more. Too many questions. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, just, yeah. you know, this. This was really our first gathering here, and 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 you have kind of laid out the map on how you're going to approach this. You've come up with ideas. Now the challenge is because you are a task force, it's kind of on you. Okay, get everything, communicate with each other, email, line up things. How you, and then at the next meeting, you'll start rolling out with the with the things that you want to achieve, knowing that the first say 20 minutes or so you're going to be listening to somebody or interacting with somebody being interested. But then after that, you know. I think and we'll we'll learn each time we get together and we get more information because you're starting from you know kind of ground zero if you will. Um, and like I said, you investigate other counties, you get more information, you come up with ideas, and you need resources to make copies or booklets or something for the rest of the board. And let me know. We'll handle all of that. One of the biggest questions that I have, which is when if we want to take a different county that we call the EDC director in, but the structure and what has worked best for them or the pitfalls, obviously, that they've had. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that in talking with um, some individuals is working together. And that, that has been a challenge where, you know, one's, you know, got two different entities there. Mm -hmm. How to, to blend that to, because that's how you make a team. Mm -hmm. uh, you have know, some competing interests. I mean, that's inevitable. It, but that's you, the first question I had, Tommy, to potentially ask is, is can you tell us the, the strengths and weaknesses as you see it of your model? Yeah. You know, where, 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 where does this model really work? And then, What's a challenge about trying to work within this model? Right. So I know sometimes it's, it's hard to project the team. Uh, I've coached for 27 years. So I know all about taking a lesser role to achieve what the team needs to win. So you know, hopefully that's something we can uh, push that as it moves forward. I might suggest if we have 20 minutes of the presenter's time to come up with four, maybe five questions that we would ask each, not and each quite each response will be unique and mm -hmm. that will lead to follow-up questions, but at least that way we'll have some similar structure. If we come up with 10 or 15 questions, whenever we need to do them all. And we're gonna find that some of those questions may not be terribly relevant to that model. So I think if we come and up with four or five general questions. To add some structure to to the question session, uh, and you can also contact the person too. Mm -hmm. You've got their email or contact them and they'll see your phone number. So if you think it comes up after the fact or you run out of yeah. time, that's you've got that we, capability. That's too. where maybe we individually say, okay, well, do you mind following up with him on this yeah. next week when we talk to so and so? We can do the follow up, and that way we, we spread the word amongst the group. Right. But who's the first? Uh, Callahan. Callahan. Mm -hmm. Mac Williams. Okay. But the number one question is we have to get answered is funding. That's our goal, that's our target, right? Mm -hmm. How are you funded? Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, break it down. Where is it? The salaries, uh, incentives, you know, anything to do with money that helps an economic help. We won't go back. What does it tend to look like year over year? Right. Up and down and up and down is a pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Right. Where is it coming from? Where is it going? Who's involved? How many people are expected? Yeah. Most of these have variations of their funding levels. You know, the yeah. typical diamond, mm -hmm. and then some of them it's like a membership, really. Uh, like membership. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to see. It's kind of like when you get a political 
request from somebody running for office, you got the $50, $100, $5,000. You've got all these levels that different people use. And so there's there's no right way to any of it. I think you have to look at Fortune County and maybe kind of know the lay of the land and the resources to determine a, a platform to find or something like that. But that's part of what you can all gather information. I think it's very doable. People Glad person, to have you on People in person really. can have a lot of heart, a lot of hard working people on all sides of it. The uh, heart is there, the will to follow. I think there's a lot of, or I have found, so I've been working in person county for seven years before that, about 20 years in Orange County in banking. And I have found person county to be a, really a terrific mix of multi generation long-term successful businesses and families that have a tremendous amount of pride in their county but they are also welcoming to new businesses and new individuals within existing businesses and uh, you know, that, that that sense of pride and the ability to point to a lot of success that the county's had on all various levels uh, and just something special Our bank can, we do some lending in Durham County, some Orange County, what have you, but basically we're going to be successful or we're going to fail based on prosperity within Person County. It's person County residents that own our bank, depositors, and our mission is to uh, serve as a repository for local funds and, and deploy them back to local borrowers to generate a return so that we can continue to provide credit to this community. It's viable. There's little doubt about it. Great. We've got money to lose. <laughs> just have to just have to money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, gentlemen. Well, if there isn't anything else, I will say we could probably wrap it up and then be prepared going forward. Like I said, in between now and Thursday when we meet at Keith's office, if you need anything from me, any resources, just shoot me a text, call me, email me, whatever. We're going to split up some of these to call. Why? I, I didn't want to call Wilson and then I, you would call. No, you know, so I, I, I was, uh, I'll do whatever the group asked me to do, but I was thinking that we would listen to the presenter okay. and then have follow up questions, and one or more of us would follow up and then you know we would all have the benefit of that initial presentation and we could get follow-up responses filtered out to the group from whoever gathers that information be prepared the next week the next week sounds like the timeline is going to work perfect we had our introductory meeting we're going to have four presentations um, and then a chance to assess everything that we heard determine what we liked what we didn't like what we think would be viable here and put together a recommendation for the commissioners. That's our focus. That's our path. That's where we end up in six weeks. And I'm sure the presenters would like a single point contact and not five or six different people calling. I think they could sure do. Yeah. So we'll prepare questions and email them to you. We're we'll just sending off to the group. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm not trying to. No, no, no. We're <laughs> small enough, <laughs> enough, small enough yeah. group that we can, that we can email each other. But I would think if we each came up with one or two questions, okay. that if we share them with the group, that way we don't all end up with one version, a different version of the same question. Right. But I don't think we need more than five of us. I don't think we need more than five questions queued up to start mm -hmm. for a 20 minute discussion. I think that'll stimulate enough response if we start getting information and we just individually jot down follow up questions. One of us follows up with those questions. So we'll probably all the prior times so that we don't get to the last four, five, and six. I think you gave us question number one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Show me the money. Nice. <laughs> the model may look <laughs> nice in the <laughs> chart, but it's not going to give you money. It's, just, it's not going to be what we want to do. Joe after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to call for adjournment? <laughs> I make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second that.
gentlemen, we are adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.